A reading from the book of 1 Kings. Today is November 6th. Our reading from 1 Kings is chapter 22. There was a lull of three years with no war between Aram and Israel. In the third year, King Jehoshaphat of Judah came to visit the king of Israel. The king of Israel said to his courtiers, You know that Ramoth Gilead belongs to us, and yet we do nothing to recover it from the hands of the king of Aram. And he said to Jehoshaphat, Will you come with me to battle at Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat answered the king of Israel, I will do what you do. My troops shall be your troops. My horse shall be your horse. But Jehoshaphat said further to the king of Israel, Please first inquire of the Lord. So the king of Israel gathered the prophets, about 400 men, and asked them, Shall I march upon Ramoth Gilead for battle, or shall I not? March, they said, and the Lord will deliver it into your majesty's hands. Then Jehoshaphat asked, Isn't there another prophet of the Lord here through whom we can inquire? And the king of Israel answered Jehoshaphat, There is one more man though whom we can inquire of the Lord, but I hate him because he never prophesies anything good for me, but only misfortune. Micaiah, son of Imlah. But King Jehoshaphat said, Don't say that, your majesty. So the king of Israel summoned an officer and said, Bring Micaiah, son of Imlah, at once. The king of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah were seated on their thrones, arrayed in their robes on the threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets were prophesying before them. Zedekiah, son of Chanana had provided himself with iron horns, and he said, Thus said the Lord, with these you shall gore the Arameans till you make an end of them. And all the other prophets were prophesying similarly, March upon Ramoth Gilead in triumph. The Lord will deliver it into your majesty's hands. The messenger who had gone to summer Micaiah said to him, Look, the words of the prophet are with one accord favorable to the king. Let your word be like that of the rest of them. Speak a favorable word. As the Lord lives, Micah answered, I will speak only what the Lord tells me. When he came before the king, the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we march upon Ramoth Gilead for battle, or shall we not? He answered him, March in triumph. The Lord will deliver it into your majesty's hands. The king said to him, How many times must I adjure you to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then he said, I saw all Israel scattered over the hills like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let everyone return to his home in safety. Didn't I tell you? to the king of Israel, to Jehoshaphat, that he would not prophesy good fortune for me, but only misfortune. But Micaiah said, I call upon you to hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord seated upon his throne with all the hosts of heaven, standing in attendance to the right and to the left of him. The Lord asked, Who will entice Ahab so that he will march and fall at Ramoth Gilead? Then one said thus, and another said thus, until a certain spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. How? the Lord asked him. And he replied, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Then he said, You will entice and you will prevail. Go out and do it. So the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours. The Lord has decreed disaster upon you. Thereupon Zedekiah, son of Chanana, stepped up and struck Micaiah on the cheek and demanded, Which way did the spirit of the Lord pass from me to speak with you? And Micaiah replied, You'll find out on the day when you try to hide the innermost room. Then the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and turn him over to Ammon, the city's governor, and to Prince Joash, and say the king's orders are, Put this fellow in prison, let him be fair, fair be scant, and water until I come home safe. To which Micaiah reported, If you ever come home safe, the Lord has not spoken through me. He said further, Listen, all you peoples. So the king of Israel and the king of Jehoshaphat of Judah marched upon Ramoth Gilead. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Disguise yourself and go into battle, but you wear your robes. So the king of Israel went into the battle disguised. Now the king of Aram had instructed his thirty-two chariot officers, Don't attack anyone, small or great, except the king of Israel. So when the chariot officers saw Jehoshaphat, whom they took for the king of Israel, they turned upon him to attack him. And Jehoshaphat cried out, And when the chariot officers became aware that he was not the king of Israel, they turned back from pursuing him. Then a man drew his bow at random and hit the king of Israel between the plates of armor. And he said to his charioteer, Turn the horses around and get me behind the lines. I am wounded. The battle raged all day long, and the king remained propped up in the chair facing Aram. The blood from the wound ran down into the hollow of 
of the chariot, and at dusk he died. As the sun was going down, a shout went through the army, every man to his own town, every man to his own district. So the king died and was brought to Samaria. They buried the king in Samaria, and they flushed out the chariot at the pool of Samaria. Thus the dogs lapped up his blood, and the whores bathed in it in accordance with the word that the Lord had spoken. The other events of Ahab's reign and all his actions, the ivory palace that he built and all the towns that he fortified, are all recorded in the annals of the kings of Israel. Ahab slept with his fathers, and his son Ahaziah succeeded him as king. Jehoshaphat, son of Asa, had become king of Judah in the fourth year of king of Ahab of Israel. Jehoshaphat was 35 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for 25 years. <coughs> his mother's name was Azubah, daughter of Shilhi. He followed closely the course of his father Asa and did not deviate from it, doing what was pleasing to the Lord. However, the shrines did not cease to function. The people still sacrificed and offered at the shrines. And further, Jehoshaphat submitted to the king of Israel. As for the other events of Jehoshaphat's reign and the valor he displayed in battle, they are recorded in the annals of the kings of Judah. He also stamped out the remaining male prostitutes who had survived the land from the time of his father Asa. There is no king in Edom. A viceroy acted as king. Jehoshaphat constructed Tarshish ships to sail to Ophir for gold, but he did not sail because the ships were wrecked at Ezion Geber. Then Ahaziah, son of Ahab, proposed to Jehoshaphat, Let my servants sail on the ship with your servants. But Jehoshaphat would not agree. Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of his father David, and his son Jehor Jehoram succeeded him as king. Meanwhile, Ahaziah, son of Ahab, had become king of Israel in Samaria in the seventh year of King Jehoshaphat of Judah. He reigned over Israel two years. He did what was displeasing to the Lord, following in the footsteps of his father and his mother, and in those Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who had caused Israel to sin. He worshipped Baal and bowed down to him. He vexed the Lord, the God of Israel, just as his father had done.